All right, this is your test for review. Let's look at problem number one. The directions say express the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis in symbolic form. Use the correct symbol for the indicated parameter. All right, so number one, it says um, entomologist writes an article in a scientific journal which claims that fewer than 22 in 10,000 male fireflies are unable to produce light due to a genetic mutation. Use the parameter P, the true proportion of fireflies unable to produce light. All right, so his claim was fewer than 22 in 10,000. So that's less than 22 <coughs> in 10,000. So I'm going to need a calculator to convert that over. That is 22 ten thousandths, <laughs> of course. That's my original claim. The opposite of that would be P is greater than or equal to 0 0.0022. So my null hypothesis is the one with equality, but then I make it equals. So it's going to be P equals 0 0.0022. The other one, that's my alternate hypothesis, my H sub 1. P is less than 0 0.0022. That's A. All right, number two. Carter Motor Company claims that its new sedan, the Libra, will average better than 30 miles per gallon in the city. Use mu, the true average mileage of the Libra. All right, so it says it will average better than 30 miles. So mu is greater than 30. The opposite of that, mu is less than or equal to 30. So your null hypothesis is the one with equality. It's going to be mu, and now we have to make it equals 30. Your alternate hypothesis is the other one. So mu greater than 30. All right, that's D as in delta. Number three, a skeptical paranormal researcher claims that the proportion of Americans that have seen a UFO is less than one in every thousand. So the proportion is less than one thousandth. One in every thousand is one thousandth. Then the opposite of that is going to be P is greater than or equal to 0 0.001. So the null hypothesis, use the one with equality and set it equals. All right, and the other one, is your alternate hypothesis. So P is less than 0 0.001. All right. Number four. The owner of a football team claims that the average attendance at games is over 83,000 and he's therefore justified moving the team to a city with a larger stadium. So the claim is that the mean is greater than 83,000. So opposite of that is less than or equal to. The one with equality will be my null hypothesis. My alternate hypothesis is the other. All right, that is B. Number five, assume the data has a normal distribution and the number of observations is greater than 50. Find the critical Z value used to test a null hypothesis. All right, so on number five, we're given that alpha is equal to 0 0.05 for a two-tailed test. All right, since it's two-tailed, that means that we want the area in both of the tails, the left tail and the right tail, 
to add up to be 0 0.05. Okay, so that means we have two critical values. Since a Z distribution is symmetric, if you find the one on the left, which would be the negative critical value, it will have the same one on the right if you just make the critical value positive. The reason I suggest finding the one on the left, if you can, <coughs> is because our table is cumulative from left to right. So if I want my two areas to add up to be 0 0.05, that means that the area in one of the tails is 0 0.05 divided by 2. I only have to do that with two-tailed. All right, so what I'm going to do, divide that, you get 0 0.025. So that's the area on each side. So I need to use my critical z-score chart and see if I have an area of 0 0.025, what z-score does that correspond to? So if I go to my table, 0 0.025 is right here. 1.92. All right, and so if you go over, you see negative 1.9. Six. So that's the one on the left. That's a z-score of negative 1.96. The one on the right will be the positive of that, 1.96. That only works for z-distribution, where it will be the same on the left and the right, okay, because it's symmetric. So that's what I'm looking for, plus or minus 1.96. That is C. Number six says alpha is equal to 0 .09 for a right tail test. So what that means is, if I was looking under the curve, it says it's right tailed. So on the right side here, I want this area here to be equal to 0 .09. It only has one tail and it's right tailed. Now to find this z-score that would border where we have 0 .09 area to the right using a z-score chart, I'm going to need to look up this area here because remember the z-score chart is cumulative from left to right. So what's the actual area that I'm going to have to look up? You say 1 minus 0 .09 or 0.91. That's the area that I want to look up or that I have to look up to give me this z-score, a critical z-score on the right side. You always have to do that. You say 1 minus and get this area right here and then that's what I'm looking for in my table to give me a z-score. So I go back to my table. I want 0.91 as an area All right, so 0.9, all right, I have 0 0.9099, 0 0.9115. So 0 0.9099, I'm going to scroll up a little bit. Maybe I can see what column that is. All right, so 0 0.9099, that's 1.3, and then go up 4. So 1.34. All right, so number six is C. Don't pick A, which is plus or minus point, uh, 1.34, because this is right-tailed. There's only one answer, positive 1.34. Two yes. Two-tailed, two answers, plus or minus. Right-tailed, one answer. It will be a positive Z-score. Left-tailed, like I'm about to do on the next problem, we're going to get a negative z-score. All right. So number seven, alpha equals 0 0.05 for a left tail test. All right. So that means bell curve on the left side. I want an area right here of 0 0.05. I don't have one on the right side because it's left tailed, so that means it only has one tail. All right, so I need to look at my chart for an area of 0 
all right, it's going to be negative. There's an actual star there in the chart between these two values to tell you it's negative 1.6. And if you follow the arrow down, negative 1.645. And it's only that one answer. No plus or minus. It was left-tailed, so there's just one answer. Number eight, the directions say use the value of the test statistic Z, or find the value of the test statistic Z using Z equals P hat minus P over the square root of P times Q divided by N. All right, so a claim is made that a proportion of children who play sports is less than point five. And the sample statistics include n equals a thousand ninety six subjects with thirty percent saying they play a sport. Okay? So thirty percent that's what? Point three. Now one of these is P hat one of these is a population proportion P. All right. So P hat is going to be which one? All right. P hat is point three zero. That means that the population proportion the one that uh, comes from the claim is 0.5. So that's the claim that of all children in the world, less than 0.5 play sports. Okay, so that's how we know that that's P, and that's P hat. And Q in my formula is 1 minus P. So it's 1 minus 0.5, 0.5. So now I'll plug all this into my formula. So my test statistic Z is equal to 0 0.30 minus 0 0.5 divided by the square root of 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 all over N to 1,096. All right. So 0 0.3 minus 0 0.5, I know that's negative 0.2. So it's negative 0.2 over, it's going to be 0.25 divided by 1,096. <coughs> so what you can do, you can, as long as you are correct in putting it in your calculator, you can put it in your calculator. It's just sometimes, you know, yeah, if you don't trust yourself to put the calculator right, then that's not a good thing. So let's see. I'm going to put a negative. 0.2 divided by, all right, I need the square root of 0.25, so I'm going to put it in again, negative 0.2 divided by, I think I'm going to have to put all this stuff in parentheses, so parentheses, See if it'll let me do square roots. Probably going to say invalid. I may just want to do 0 0.25 divided by 1096 square root. Ah, see what it did? It's all about the way you put it in the calculator. So me, I'm going to do 0 0.25 divided by 1096. So that's what's under your radical. Then I'm going to take the square root of that. All right, so that's what would be in the denominator. So I want to say negative 0.2 divided by that. Another way of doing that is taking the reciprocal and multiplying by negative 0.2 or times negative 0.2. So do it ever how you're comfortable with doing it, but I'm going to take the reciprocal and multiply by 
a negative 0.2. That just takes and works out the bottom, flips it and multiplies times the top. All right, so I got, if I round the two places, negative 13.24. So do that in the calculator, whichever is best to suit your calculator skills. All right, number nine. Use the given information to find the p-value. So we want to find the p-value. Also, use sigma equals 0 0.05. And State the conclusion about the null hypothesis. Either reject or fail to reject. All right. So it says the test statistic in a two-tailed test is Z equals 1.95. All right. So we want to find the p-value. It tells us it's a two-tailed test that's given in the problem. For a two-tailed test to find the p-value, remember we have a little chart that we can follow, and it tells us how to calculate the p-value. Here it is right here. If the test is two-tailed, then, is the test statistic to the right or left of center? If the test statistic is positive, it's to the right. If it's negative, it's to the left. Our test statistic is positive. The p-value equals twice the area to the right of the test statistic. So, what does that mean? That means that if I had my bell-shaped curve, here's the test statistic. It'll be somewhere over here. the p-value is going to be equal to twice the area to the right. So figure out what the area to the right is and say twice that. Remember though, if I just go and blindly look up 1.95 in my chart my, as a z, the answer that it gives me is going to be the area from the left up to that point. So what I have to do, since it's this stuff to the right, I'm going to have to find the area that it gives me and say 1 minus that. So let's go to the chart. Look up positive 1.95. 1 1.9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the area up to that z-score is 0.9744. So all of this, all of that up to that point is 0.9744. So if we want to find this area to the right, I say 1 minus 0.9744. So that's the area to the right, 0 0.0256. And the chart told me that I had to say that times 2 to get my p-value. So my p-value is that number times 2, 0 0.0512. Now, I look at my significance value. And if my p-value is less than my significance value, I reject h sub o. If it's less than my significance value, I reject. If it's greater than, I fail to reject. So this is greater than. So on number 9, I got a p-value of 0 0.0512. And I fail to reject the null hypothesis. That's A. Number 10, find the p-value for the indicated hypothesis test. 
a medical school claims that more than 28% of its students plan to go into general practice. <coughs> it is found that among a random sample of 130 students, 32% of them plan to go into general practice. So 32% is 0.32. Find the p-value for a test of the school's claim. All right. So the last one was two-tailed, so we didn't have to really do anything except know that we took twice the area to the um, right of the test statistic because we had a positive critical value. This one, we're not given a critical value, so I have to figure that out. Also, we weren't told is this right-tailed, left-tailed, or two-tailed. The way you tell that is you have to write down the null and alternate hypothesis. So here was the claim. The opposite of that is p is less than 0.28, less than or equal to. So that makes my null hypothesis p equals 0.28. The other one is my alternate hypothesis. That's p is greater than 0.28. The alternate hypothesis tells us if it's right-tailed, left-tailed, or two-tailed. The alternate hypothesis has a greater than, so that means it's right-tailed. If it would have been less than, it would be two-tailed. If it would have been not equal to, it, I'm sorry, if it would have been less than, it would have been left-tailed. Remember, less than, left-tailed. Greater than, right-tailed. If it would have been not equal to, then it would be two-tailed. Again, if the alternate hypothesis is greater than, your test is right-tailed. If it's less than, it's left-tailed. And if it's not equal to, it's two-tailed. This one was greater than, so this is right-tailed. I need to know that if I'm finding a p-value. All right, so before I can find the p-value, I have to find the test statistic. The formula for a test statistic for z-distribution is p hat minus p over the square root of p times q divided by n. So 0.32 minus, if 0.32 is p hat, that was the one from the sample. The population is 0.28. So minus 0.28 over the square root of 0.28 times, all right, so I have to find Q, so Q is 1 minus P, so it's going to be 0 0.72 over N, 130. All right, so that numerator is 0 0.04, the denominator 0.28 times 0.72 divided by 130 square root. So this long number, that's the denominator. In the calculator, you can either say 0 0.04 and then divide by this, or you can just say the reciprocal times the numerator. So this is the reciprocal button times the numerator. Round that to two places. So the test statistic is 1.02. All right, so this is right-tailed. So if you have your bell curve, that means that on the right side somewhere, we have a Z of equal to 1.02. All right, it's right-tailed. So we look back at our chart that tells us how to calculate the p-value. And it says that if it's right-tailed here, the p-value is the area to the right of the test statistic. So again, if I just blindly use z equals 1.02 in my formula, it's going to give me the area to the left. I need the area to the right. So go to your z-score chart, 
My test statistic was 1.02. So the area to the left is 0.8461. So all of this on the on the left side is 0.8461. If I want to know this stuff on the right side, I have to say 1 minus 0.8461. All right? So that's going to be the area to the right. That's 0.1539. That's my p-value. All right. Number 11. Formulate the indicated conclusion in non-technical terms. Be sure to address the original claim. All right, so... To state the conclusion in non-technical terms, we have another little table that we can follow. And you can print this table out. You can copy it to your formula sheet. And what it's going to do is it tells you how to state your conclusion or word your conclusion. All right. So we need to figure out, does the original claim have equality or not? Once we know that, then we need to say, did we reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis? All right, so let's look at number 11. All right, so on number 11, it says that uh, an entomologist writes an article in a scientific journal which claims that fewer than 3 in 10,000 male fireflies are unable to produce light due to a genetic mutation. So that is less than 3 in 10,000. That's 3 ten thousandths. Less than... Three ten thousandths. That's the original claim. All right. Assuming that the hypothesis test of claiming has been conducted and the conclusion is to reject the null hypothesis. State the conclusion in non-technical terms. So... Does my original claim have equality? No. My original claim is less than. Okay, so if you look at the book, does the original claim in include equality? Does not, does not. So we're going to do one of these. Then did we reject or fail to reject? We reject. So you reject H sub O. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that and then state the original claim. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that, for this, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the true proportion is less than 0 0.0003 or 3 ten thousandths. All right, so on number 11, there is sufficient evidence that C. Notice that it addresses the original claim that the true proportion is less than 3 in 10,000. All right, so 11 is C. Number 12. Number 12, the original claim is that average gas mileage of the sedan is greater than 32 miles per gallon in the city. So that's the original claim. And on 12, it says that we reject the null hypothesis. All right. So we look back. And did the original claim have equality? No. We reject. Yes, we reject. So it's the top one again. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the mean is greater than 32 miles per gallon. So that's B. Number 13. This is the one about the UFO again. P is less than 2 in every 10,000. So P is less than 2 ten thousandths. That's the original claim. And it says that we want to reject H sub O again. 
lots of rejection around here. All right, so that means we're going to use, does the original claim have equality? No. Do we reject? Yes. Use this top one again. All right, so number 12, I'm sorry, number 13 is C. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim. Is that right? I'm sorry. On number 13, it says fail to reject. I must learn to read more carefully. Fail to reject. That's good because we get to practice the other. All right, so we still had no equality, so we go to our table. So, and then we fail to reject. So we're looking for the statement that, that is, there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that, and then the original claim. All right, and that's going to be C. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that the true proportion is less than 2 in 10,000. All right. Number 14, determine whether the given conditions justify testing the claim about a proportion mean. N equals 25, sigma equals 5.45, and the original population is normally distributed. So that mean, remember, mean is chi-square. And so we must have a simple random sample where the population has a normal distribution. On our problem, it says original population is normally distributed. So since the original population is normally distributed, then yes, that does meet the conditions. A simple random sample is pretty much given on all of these. All right. Number 15, determine whether the hypothesis test involves a sampling distribution of means that is a normal distribution, student T distribution, or neither. All right. Number 15, claim mu equals 961, we have n equals 21, x bar equals 907, s equals 26. Sample data appear to come from a normally distributed population. S is 26. Okay. All right. So what we want to figure out is, would this be a normal a Z distribution or a T distribution? Since it's normally distributed, then it is a what? Normal or Z distribution. All right. So number 15 is B, normal. All right, number 16, mu equals 107, n equals 15, x bar equals 100, s equals 15.1. The sample appeared to come from a normally distributed population with unknown mean and standard deviation. So unknown standard deviation along with the fact that it is normally distributed, as it tells you in the problem, comes from a normally distributed population. The big difference between 15, which it did tell us in 15, that the population standard deviation was 28. This one, there is no population standard deviation, but it's still normally distributed. When that's the case, it's a t-distribution. So it's called a student T or a T distribution. So number 16 is C. All right, number 17, mu equals 75, n equals 25, 
x bar equals 104, s equals 15.2. The sample data appear to come from a population with a distribution that's very far from normal, so it's not normally distributed, and you don't know the standard deviation. So if, if it's not normally distributed and you don't know the standard deviation, then it's neither. Can't use either test. All right. 18 through 20 are all on finding the chi-square critical values. All right, so these come from the last section. So number 18, we're told that the original claim, or I'm sorry, the null hypothesis is equal to 8.0 n equals 10, sigma equals 0 0.01. So we have to figure out the left chi-square and the right chi-square critical value. All right, degrees of freedom is 9. Hmm, alpha is 0 0.01. Any ideas? So it's not, if this is chi-square value, oh wait, we've run out of time. If this is chi-square values, so y'all can go if you want, then it's not going to be perfectly symmetric, is it? It's not. Since it's two-tailed and alpha is 0 0.01, then how am I going to find the left and the right? How would we have done this in chapter 7? Okay. So if it's two-tailed and you divide alpha by 2, then what would we have? 0 0.025? So the... Divide by 2? It's what? Point zero zero five. All right, yeah. Always good to divide correctly. All right, so that means you want an area of point zero zero five here and an area of point zero zero five here. Okay? Again, we were given equals there, so it's two tailed. We were given that the significance level is point zero one we were given that n equals 10. Degrees of freedom is 9. The way that we have to read the critical z chart, this says area to the right of the critical value. Okay? So if the area to the right of our critical value is 0 0.005, our right critical value, 23.589. Again, degrees of freedom is 9. The area to the right of this critical value is 0 0.005. So here's 0 0.005. Here's degrees of freedom 9. So there's the critical value. Where did you get 1.735 from? I didn't get 1.735. Not yet. Right now, I'm just finding the right critical value. All right, since this was two-tailed, there's a critical value on the right side and on the left side. That's how we have two. Now, the one on the left side, remember this, this graph says area to the right of the critical value. So the one for here, what's the area to the right of this if that's 0 .005? What's all that area? Well, all oh, this area. 0.995 is the area to the right of this critical value. The left critical value's area to the right is 0.995. So let's go to the chart. Degrees of freedom, 9, area to the right, 0.995. 
1.735. So for our first critical value, the one on the right was 23.89 because the area to the right was 0 0.005. The one on the left, 1.735 because the area to the right was 0.995. Only do that for two-tailed where you got to find two. On number 19, what tailed is this if you're given that sigma is greater than 3.5? Right tailed. That's right. So sigma equals 0 0.05 and it's right tailed. So we want this area here. It's not two tailed, so we don't divide that up. We want the area to the right, if it's right tailed, to be 0 0.05. What was n equal to? 14. So our degrees of freedom is 13. And the area to the right is 0 0.05. So 13. 0 0.05. That's what? 22.362. 13 degrees of freedom an area of 0 0.05 to the right. It was right tail. Alright, last problem. Number 20. Alright, we're given that we have an alternate hypothesis. Sigma is less than 0.14. Less than tells me this is left tailed. N is equal to 23. And significance level is 0.1. So this tells me that under my curve, on the left side, I want this area to be equal to 0.1. So how do I find my critical value? Remember the chi-square table wants area to the right of the critical value. So what's the area? If that's 0.1, the area to the right of that critical value has to be 0.9. So Significance value is 0.1. The area to the right, though, is 0.9. And degrees of freedom is 22. So go back to our chart. Degrees of, well, you need to make sure you know what column you're looking at. So the area to the right, we said, was 0.9. So we're going to be using this one right here. And then go down to degrees of freedom, 22. 14.042